this is a really big park and it feels like they're built <laughs> two reasons to be in Nagoya actually three the first one it's raining in Tokyo the second one it's his birthday the third one breakfast Eric loves morning set so we come to Nagoya it's the home of the morning set there, there's there's some background to that that says that Nagoya is not actually the home but we're not gonna get into that Nagoya's got a crap ton of breakfast places so mm -hmm. to the point of where like I looked one up and we went into it because it was like right next to our hotel and as soon as we walked in like the dude working there had a cigarette hanging out of his mouth and we were it's like a really small hole in the wall and I was like let's just I don't want to deal with the cigarette right now so let's scoot and we went to another one that just happened to be closed it was like down the street and then we walked around the corner and came into this one there are cafes everywhere yeah we, li we didn't walk more than five minutes away and we, from and we passed hotel. a bunch of chains that do stuff like this too like morning stuff in Nagoya is like hot and we showed that off when we did a video series here years ago <laughs> It's crazy. Okay. <laughs> Just figured we'd slide back down and have another look. We don't have anything planned to do really, so that's gonna be kind of this free ball in it. But we're getting it started with some morning stuffs. And the way that this basically works is you buy a drink and they give you some toast and an egg as like free. It just like comes with it. Savvy <laughs> yeah. And in this case, you just got the standard butter, right? Yep, I got the standard butter jam. And I got Oguda toast. And it is a toast with onko, which is like a red bean paste. And then there's going to be some butter underneath of that. And I got this one because it's kind of the thing to do in Nagoya, apparently. Like, it's like kind of like one of their specialities. Yeah. I and mean, it started getting me wondering, like, do, does each city maybe have its own twist on a morning set that we don't realize, considering right now you're having this one and that would be the quintessential Nagoya one. I wonder if you can go to another city and get a quintessential. I made the right decision. No, I don't doubt it. It's good. I usually don't go with Anko stuff for breakfast. I don't know why. But it's pretty sweet. Mm. And Very sweet. It's, just a, it's a good mixture, man. Sweet and dark. There's a darkness to it at the end. Mm. But I, I know I'm not a super big fan of it. So I feel like... I just walked away from it. <laughs> it saved 70 yen. You can't go wrong with a piece of toast with butter on it though. Mm. <laughs> the vibe in here is really relaxed. It's got a lush green, lots of wood. It's very comforting. And one thing that stood out is the menu. It's quite simplistic, uh, very easy to digest. You have six options, figure it out. But what's interesting is it's printed on a postcard. And I really, really, really want to send this in the postcard club. <laughs> that would be amazing, but I don't know if they have enough. And maybe one day I'll try and find this uh, menu and print it on a postcard for people. That would be too cool. Like, that's the vibe here. <laughs> We really have no plan. So what we're doing right now is going to kind of just like a random little special train that I found that I want to ride. And we're going to ride this little special train. And to get there, we've got to hop a little bit out of the Nagoya area and go like 30 minutes on a subway ride to another train. We've got to take a train to a train is what we're doing here. <laughs> Um, but we're kind of still up, I guess it's before 10, so all these shops and stuff inside of this little shopping area are all closed. Yep. I kind of like these vibes, like when it's got this underground walking path and there's just like, I don't know, it's just weird. There's just something about it. <laughs> I just dig this quiet, like, closed down vibe. Was there? What, what happens when you don't play the I nice kind of, cock game appropriately? I kind of assumed <laughs> from across the street that there'd be a nice cock on this model. A gorilla <laughs> and a turtle. And when I think spicy, I think gorillas and turtles. This stuff is made in America? 
I didn't know that. Well, this particular brand is. Is this the brand though? No, no, this is not what we know. This is not the uh, hot cock sauce. Is that, <laughs> is that what it's, what we call it? I, I haven't seen it in so long. This is just like a knockoff of it. I don't know, man. And is who it? would make a vending know. machine for this? I thought it was Vietnamese, you know what I mean? What, what in my immediate future necessitates this? <laughs> I'm gonna get on a train. Does the train need hot sauce? I'm going to some mystery place that you're planning out. Does it need hot sauce? I'm gonna have dinner and lunch and fika. Does fika need hot sauce? Is there more over here? I'm just looking for a chicken to save my... <laughs> no, you already lost it, son. Give me your arm. What happens? Ow! Are you serious? Yes! That's the punishment? That's the punishment. I'll remember that. I do call chicken sometimes. Yeah, that's calling chicken and not cock. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. What happened? I was trying to get I was trying to get a five five zero coin. <laughs> I realized once I started that word I couldn't fix it. Um I was trying to get a 50 yen coin back, so I structured my monies to the machine appropriately. But that mother gave me this back. I don't need more coins. Oh, we should actually start here. We haven't gone far, okay? <laughs> um, right over here, you can see that there's a canned coffee that I've never seen before. It's also extremely cheap, which is probably not a good sign. Uh, I don't know if this is Nagoya specific, but it's not in Tokyo because I've been perusing these little uh, canned coffees. Like me and a friend had a canned coffee connoisseur breakfast one day where we just taste tested all the canned coffees. We were jacked up on caffeine afterwards. Um, we saw this, it was only cold in another machine. And since it's been very windy and we're around about eight degrees Celsius, we're getting into the teens now. It's getting a little bit warmer but not very much. I wanted a hot one, so I didn't get one there. Here, we got the hot ones. So I got a hot one, Eric asked for one. That means he's gonna super friend me for at least the next four hours. Caffeine does let's, me in. Let's talk about this can. Like number one, MS Paint, who did this? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is not very good. And the beard, is it, is it a beard? Or is it the cap of a mountain? I, I really can't tell. I thought it was a cloud. Oh, or a cloud. And he's like peeking from behind it? And then... Or maybe it's cream? Victor once told me that if you reflect anything, everybody's like always, wow. And there's a reflection <laughs> of the mountain here. <laughs> they knew that if they reflected it, But what's weird about like, it is wow. the dude isn't reflected. So it like breaks the illusion of the reflection. Like it's weird, it's weird looking. It just makes it really look like he's in superimposed on the top of it since the back is reflected. So my thought about this is it's going to be sugary as fuck. Like that's what this says to me. Like all the terrible quality here the laughable quality um that was masterful did you see that yeah One i was really impressed can. oh creamy oh does it have cows oh no it has milk yeah these have milk okay not it is not sugary it is creamy hmm. um and that's interesting i feel like i haven't really had that. I seek out sugary, but the cream has really made it like a very mellow flavor. So maybe that's just, I think that's cream all over his face. Oh, <laughs> like he got into the cream yeah, game. Yeah, a little creamy. <laughs> Our train ride out to Fuji Gaoka, which is where we are now, was just on a normal subway. And some of it was underground, some of it was above ground, and it was a nice little ride. The reason that I've come out here though is to ride a different train. And the different train is unique in all of Japan because it is the only operating maglev commercial, like operating, actually functioning maglev system in the country. And the reason this is kind of interesting to me, especially in Nagoya, is because they are trying to build a Shinkansen bullet train style maglev train that goes between Nagoya and Tokyo and then eventually to Osaka. And it's supposed to be open in like 2027 or something. But there's all these like, problems with the construction because different places that the train line is going through are protesting it. In one place they have to build a tunnel through a 
area with a lake and the people that live there are worried the lake is gonna like just all like go through the tunnel and then just they'll have no lake so like some politician was elected recently on the platform of stopping the maglev shinkansen system so this train that they've been working on for like decades is still just kind of hung up in like development hell and it gets a lot of press and people talk about it all like oh we're gonna have this maglev and it goes like 500 kilometers an hour or something it's insane it's like really really incredible technology but i was unaware that there was already an operating maglev line and that's what starts here so we're gonna go and get on this maglev line and it was built specifically for the 2005 world expo or something i think it was i think that's what i read on on wikipedia five minutes ago and it does not do like super high speeds or anything but it is a maglev system where it floats above the ground uh like an inch it's like this this high up off of like its track system or whatever and i don't think i've ever been on a maglev system there's a few of them around the world but um because most of my train experience is in japan and this is the only maglev system in japan i haven't been on it and the reason this really hit me up as interesting <laughs> is because I wanted to ride the other maglev system that they're working on building. And a few years ago, they had like a way that you could go and ride it as like an experience, like they were doing test runs, but I couldn't ever win the lottery to get tickets for it. So I was like, well, I guess I'm never gonna ride a maglev, but that changes now. After Eats review, bogus. That's all. Yeah, real talk, that thing sort of tasted like licking a penny. <laughs> it wasn't a good thing. You got that penny taste out of your mouth? Yeah, I got something else in there. I don't know what that king's making. I don't know if that was coffee. <laughs> 80 yen, man. <laughs> Those that may not know what a maglev is, you probably can figure it out by just the word, but it's like magnetic levitation. And I don't understand how it works. How do the magnets tell each other which direction to go? I think that like it has like a positive charge on one thing and a negative charge on the track or whatever. Like the machine but has a positive and a negative, and then they push electricity through the track and it pushes the machine apart. But then you have to think about how do they get electricity to this machine? Because it's floating you're like an inch above the rails like you're not touching anything and it's really obvious because when you're riding it it's really really smooth it is really shockingly smooth <laughs> i mean it does like it, go back and forth this way mm. but but the this ride it just it flows it feels kind you don't of like the feel the tr -tr 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 that yes. you would normally feel yeah. not that jr's trains are doing a whole lot of that but there's a notable difference yeah yeah for sure it is a small little train it's not very many cars we walk from one end to the other end in like a minute so i don't know maybe it's like three cars long or something like that and it feels like a local commuter-ish type of system more than like something that would be long distance and i don't think this train i don't think the track is like super long or anything but it feels very very modern and the thing that surprised me and i didn't realize this is that there's nobody driving this thing there's like, there's, there's no driver, which I know isn't that weird. Like you go to the airport or whatever and they have like autonomous train lines or whatever, but that's pretty rare in Japan. There's almost always a staff member at the front of the train driving and a staff member in the back making announcements and like keeping track of things and stuff. But like there was a dude that worked for the train on here and he got off. And when we walked through the train, there were no, there was no staff. Like, we're all alone. We're here to fend Let's for ourselves. Let's burn it to the ground, Eric <laughs> That's I don't know immediately if, what I thought. I, I was like, yep, we're burning it to the ground. I don't know if we could get it to the ground. It's being pushed up by magnets, man. How do you burn a magnet? The next station is At the station we decided to get off at the maglev train there's a huge park and it turns out that they are making this somewhat of a ghibli park like you can even see ghibli oh. park yeah, is written right here on the elevators of this amazing little building it's just an elevator building for right now at least so we're gonna go downtown 
this is a really big park and it feels like they're building a theme park based on Ghibli stuff. I can't tell if it's being just renovated and updated or if they're just adding everything in new. It sort of feels like they're adding everything in new. But there's like a house over here from Totoro and I think that the elevator that looked like a clock tower we just rode in, I think that's from a thing. But we are not like, we don't go deep on Ghibli movies. I've seen like three or four of them. <laughs> I think you might seen two. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> well, I've, I've at least seen Four. I can oh. think of four. Well, you're the expert then. What, what is that thing from? <laughs> <laughs> Not a movie I've seen. I can tell you that now. But even even without that stuff, this is a pretty nice park. I mean, aside from the fact there's a lot of construction going on. But it seems like a pretty cool place just for the community. There's like a big open greenery area. It's not like a little Japanese kitty litter park. You know what I mean? Like mm. it's like a real dog. It's like got grass and stuff. Leave it to Ghibli to make artwork of baby corn. Is that their thing? No, it's a <laughs> joke. <laughs> See, like the thing is, is you've seen one more movie than I have, so maybe one of them is about baby corn. It's I don't all know. About baby corn. <laughs> uh, I was thinking about this while we were walking past this beautiful little lake, and the thing I was thinking was, how do they get power to the maglev train? And they don't. <laughs> well, they have to. Maybe it's got batteries on it for like the announcements and stuff, but the motion, I bet the way it works is the train is like dumb in the sense of like how it's like levitated and how it moves forward. And the track is alternating positive and negative. Mm -hmm. So like that alternation goes back and forth fast enough that it propels the train. Like when you put a magnet on something, how, you know how it pushes it forward a little bit? Like if it's an, uh, if you have an, like the opposite side, mm -hmm. like it pushes it away, right? Mm -hmm. So if you just alternated that along the track, I think you could create propulsion forward. I, I bet you that's how it works. So it's not like, I mean, it's not like there's like, a, a, how else does it move? It's gotta use, the, it has to use the electrical force. So it's not pushing against anything else, nothing else to touch. Mm. So it must be something in the way that works. So they don't actually have to push motion electricity into the actual train. But maybe just like, there must be a battery or something, or maybe they can like, you know how you can wirelessly charge a phone? Mm. I don't know, man, it doesn't make sense. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> the, what kind uh, of science is this? <laughs> it's it's like, master level science. <laughs> yeah, it's like magic is what it is. We've wandered into an area that doesn't have any routes on Google Maps, but Eric has found us a route and it took us to this spiral fountain, which I've never seen anything like this. They've done a really good job of just making something you want to stare at and listen to and just enjoy but it, it kind of is tucked away in an area that people might not find it. So, a little secret. <laughs> One of the main attractions here is apparently the little girls from Totoro, Satsuki and Mei, they have their house here that you can go and visit. And I actually believe that you have to, you can go inside and you can pay. Yeah, yeah, I saw pictures Like 500 yen or something to go inside. But it is all closed down because they are doing I'm pretty sure renovations, not new builds. Renovations at least of that house because yeah. that has been here for a while. Yeah, and there's but, like yeah. the signs for it around the park are kind of old. Mm. It's not like a new thing. And why would they be advertising all over the place to go to the thing if the thing didn't exist yet? So yeah. it must be renovating. Uh, but uh, yeah, we tried our best to even get to the point where we would have like an overlook and it's just not happening. Every path is closed for various different reasons. And then there's signs everywhere that say that the house itself is closed. So, but it's a nice park. It's a relaxing park. Yeah, it's we rode a really weird nice. elevator <laughs> and saw a snowman and enjoyable. I got no, no, no complaints at all. It's very nice. I think it'd be cool to come here once all the renovations are finished and see how deep and hard they went on all the Ghibli stuff. Mm. Especially if you were like a big Ghibli fan. I'm pulling over. You're going to see if we can take the... Is there see if a, the bus happens. I think the bus is not happening from this spot. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> those aren't the kanjis. Know, okay. Those are not the kanjis you're looking for. No. <laughs> Five minute walk. Nagoya and spaghetti. Japan and spaghetti. Like that doesn't. They don't go together for me. But Nagoya has a special type of spaghetti dish called ankake. I don't have any idea what the sauce is. It is not a traditional kind of white sauce or red sauce. It's a brown sauce. I am going to find out if the sauce. Oh my god! It's way gooier than I thought. Did you get that? Oh my god! So very gravy esque.
It's zesty as hell. It has coated the fork. Very exciting sauce. Um, I don't know how to describe that. It's like gravy met a little bit of spice. So if you took your traditional gravy and then put made it a little bit spicy. Um, we've got your typical white noodles, a little thick, and on top of it, you can get tons of toppings. Like this, the, the menu here is extensive. But we have ordered the number one, and that comes with wiener, ham, onions, peppers, and mushrooms. And back in the day, minus the wieners and, and the ham, trade those in for pepperoni. My mom used to get a, uh, like, would always have the Supreme from Pizza Hut. And that's what it smells like. It smells like the, the warm peppers coming out of the pizza box while you're riding home, waiting to eat the pizza. And we've also gotten a meatball because meatballs aren't done here very often. And I, I want mean, it, to know. It's sort of Hamburg. I disagree. I disagree. Um, yeah, that's a really great meatball good seasoning and I was a little bit worried like when you look at these pictures they don't really look that good and I'm still kind of worried but I've, I've tasted the sauce and the sauce is good I'm gonna mix this up I assume that's what you're supposed to do the wiener on the end it's very unexpected and I really can't describe it. Um, I thought that we would not have to have you eat any of this to get a description of what the food was, but it's almost like they took, this is going to sound insulting, but it, it isn't meant to be insulting. It's like they took the seasoning packet from a ramen, like a, a top ramen, and they put it into gravy. Like it's just, it's just the full uh, spice explosion is what it is. It's like they've taken a seasoning packet and just put it in there and there's, there, it's not mellowed down at all and peppery. I don't know. How thinly sliced does the wiener need to be? <laughs> oh my God. It's this so flavor. thin. Yeah, hold on, hold on. This flavor has got nowhere to hide. Look how thin those wieners are, y'all. <laughs> Mm. No, it's not bad. Alright, sauce. Way gooier than oh, expected. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that texture is bizarre. Like, it's. Yeah, it's really, really, really like. Okay, I'm glad your face looks yeah, like that. Yeah, yo, it's it, it brown. Like, that's, that's the whole flavor, but you're right. It does have a lot of that. It does, it's like a ramen packet. You're right. Like, you nailed exactly the explanation of it. Um, I, I don't. <laughs> it's like something I, I've never had anything quite like this before. It's really salty. It's a lot of sodium. Uh, I guess we're gonna be getting a Coca Cola after this. Yeah, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need some Coca Cola. And I actually ordered um, one egg and they put two on my meal. It's the only thing that's really different from mine to Katie's. The chicken did a good job. And you said that you didn't feel like this was the same as Hamburg. Yeah, it's different. It tastes like a, it tastes like a meatball more than it does a meat loaf, which there is a difference. <laughs> um, and the last thing that Katie had just pointed out, they gave us this like little dish of potato salad and stuff. Uh, and you said the potato salad had a surprise to it. I don't, I don't know what I'm tasting there. I don't, what did you it, It's wasabi. Is it wasabi? Yeah, I think you're right. We'll do, we'll do a little bit of wasabi and the potato salad. That's genius. Let's step back. I was right about the ramen. I was right about the meatball. And now I'm right about the wasabi. <laughs> 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 
We just came outside. I am incredibly full. 220 grams of noodles is excessive in my opinion, or in my bodily, like, physicalness. Uh, we found the mascot for this place, and this chick has a sweet mustache. One thing that hasn't been specified with this trip is that this is an Eric-based trip. Even though it's his birthday, I've done absolutely no planning. This is all Eric. So wherever we're going, we're on a maglev train, or right now we're at an electricity museum. This is the Eric trip, and I'm enjoying it so far. We have found one of these balls that everybody, when they were little, always wanted to play with, and we're older now, and we still want to play with it. And I have long hair, and you know you saw those pictures when you were little where the, the girl's hair was like out to here because of the electricity? I'm just waiting. When does it happen? I tried to put my hair on it. No, nothing happens. We're gonna need Mo Juice. Mo Juice, oh, okay, I see. I am actively learning because I saw a grandmother with her daughter or grandmother with her granddaughter and it didn't seem like they were absorbing anything like the grandmother was kind of just there and was like not trying to understand the things and was just kind of moving on and the child was sitting there doing things but not really absorbing anything about it and I was like that's kind of sad and then I looked at myself and I was like are you absorbing anything so then I walked into this room that Eric was in and I was like I'm gonna learn some stuff and we learned about some colors that I didn't know did you Red and green do not make yellow. They do not make yellow. We were testing this when we get home. <laughs> we just tested it. We did, and it was yellow. It's unbelievable. But one of the things that we've run into is what might be informing us on how the maglev actually works. We have uh, a south and a north magnet. They, they label them like that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I think the magnets are on the train car, and then they run electricity through them, or gas, right? And then push the button. So I'm pushing the energy out to... The middle piece. The middle piece. And the way that it's interacting with those magnets is motion. And it would be moving forward or backward or in whatever direction it's supposed to. I guess yeah. it can't go off the tracks, so... I think there's like rails, like, I don't know how it keeps it from going left, right? I think there's magnets on the side of the rail or something, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, I think that this, this motion is how that train works. Yeah, I gotta think harder about this one. What color? Yeah. <laughs> what color? <laughs> this is legitimately kind of sketchy feeling. <laughs> This dude's got a hell of a gerb. Wow. We are zooming. The museum was fun. Yeah. But it did leave us with the biggest conversation is where the hell does yellow come from? <laughs> where does yellow come they from? Had, they had this display and it was like projecting white and it was like the three primary colors, red, green, blue, and the red and the green made yellow. And Katie was like, I thought they made brown. I thought Katie was crazy. Cause like, I've always heard red and green make, or red and green make yellow. And the, the white was showing yellow. Yellow was a thing. And she was like, no, it doesn't. This is lying. I, I was ready to <laughs> slap a scientist about this and just be like, you liars. And then they had this big presentation and they went over all this stuff and they talked about that over and over and they showed it. And they were like, I was like, see, it makes yellow, it makes yellow. So then she starts they, they messaging. They took like that, that microscopic thing on the pixels of the computer monitor while it was displaying the color yellow and they took the little device down there so and they showed the, you what the, the pixels each colored LED. And the pixels were doing the red and the green making the yellow. And I was just like, <laughs> I don't know how to accept this. <laughs> So you started like messaging your friends and making polls and I made a poll on Twitter and it turns out they do make yellow but I guess only with light but if you mix red and green with like, like physical paint, things like it makes paint brown. and I didn't know this. So now I don't know where brown light comes from. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah. Where does it Where does brown light? 
Where does yellow come from? Is it like a magical color? How do you make yellow paint if it's not red and green? <laughs> I don't know. We, we left with way less knowledge than we went in mm. with that, that we thought we had. Oh, I, 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 thought the world, I thought I had the whole universe figured out and now everything's totally askew. My primary colors are all boned. Mm. I'm lost. Let's get some Fika. Fika time, even though it's kind of past Fika time, it's like five o'clock or something. Sometimes when we travel, things get out of control a little bit. <laughs> we try to do Fika at 3.30, and uh, that was a while ago. We were arguing about the color yellow at <laughs> 3.30. But we've come over to a place that is apparently the oldest cafe or one of the oldest cafes in the city, and it's called Keiki Bom Bom. And uh, it's got a really cool little vibe. It feels... They've nailed it. They haven't like ruined it with some weird jazz music that doesn't match and like the ambiance is just spot on. And they've got a bunch of little cakes and they're pretty cheap. It's like 300 yen for a little cake and maybe 300 yen for a drink, which isn't like a ridiculous amount of money for and such They've things. got like 15 cakes to choose yeah, from. Yeah, the menu is extensive. So they didn't have the blueberry thing that I wanted. <laughs> Mid Minus 14 cakes to choose from. <laughs> so what I ended up just getting kind of, because I didn't know what it was, it was an American. This is called an American. This is an American eating an American. And it's a big tall piece of something cake. And it's kind of like a firm cake with like a glaze on the top, like a sugary sticky glaze. I don't know what, what I'm getting into at all. Apple, cinnamon, coffee, tell me. Mm. Is it all of those? Apple and cinnamon, I think, yeah. Oh, it's good. For 300 yen. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Um, I almost wish it was a little warm. It's kind of cold. And I think if it was warmed up a little bit, it would be a more pleasant experience, but it might lose its consistency and like not hold together. So there might be a scientific reason, something about yellow, that is keeping that from being heated up. But yeah, I, I think I think you're right. I think it's an apple in there and cinnamon and there's some, definitely some brown. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, this is cool. I mean, with the ambiance and everything, this is like spot on. That's all I got. <laughs> Classic Japanese helpfulness on the menu. Things are listed out in number one, number two, number three in popularity. So I just chose the number one, which also coincidentally meant I don't know what it is either. This is called a model. Kind of a soft pastriness. Lots of, what is this, powdered sugar. A little bit of cream on top. I don't know if there's anything inside there. Oh, there's, there's cream. There's cream inside there. Cream is what makes Fika and is why I started doing Fika, so I could have more cream. I thought you didn't like cream. Uh, what? I thought you, you, you always talk about cream and not... You, I started using Nama Cream Roll and you're like, no. No, the roll sucks. <laughs> Even though it's got the cream, it has destroyed the cream. Right. This is just a roll that's been tucked into like a fold like that and it's made me reappreciate, but... There was a weird flavor on the top that was like green that didn't make sense for what was happening here. So I thought maron was like a little chestnut type thing. That might be. And that's what you just ate. Yeah. So maybe that's infused into the thing. Yeah, that was the flavor. It was a very strange, like, didn't expect that flavor. Yeah, when you, once you get inside, you get to see that there's lots of cream. And I like cream. You need to register this as an important thing. Cream is good. Roll cake sucks. All right, quick update here. I was really confident about this cake having apples in it, but it totally doesn't have apples. Yeah, we Katie asked ate the it guy. and he's like, I don't think it has I don't apples. Have any and we apples. asked the dude. 
And then we were trying to think, there's there's definitely raisins in it. Mm. And we were like, maybe it's a rum raisin, but it's not a very strong rum flavor. Mm. But you can trick your mind into thinking that's there. And the guy said there's cinnamon, raisins, nuts, and some other things, and no apples. Yeah. Mm. But I'm like, maybe the cinnamon just really makes my brain apple. And there's something about the texture of the way it all works that I can feel like apple. I don't know. I think I'm just an idiot. I don't know what an apple tastes like. And I have reverted on this cake. Like, I keep... That that first flavor that you saw me react to, I keep having that at the beginning of each of my bite. And it kind of tastes like a soggy underarm. How do you know what that tastes like? I just know what the smell would smell like. And I'm forcing that to be a taste. And it's right at the beginning. It's like a shocker right at the beginning. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm going to have to lick some underarms because I don't think it tastes too bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> you a freak. I get that there are not dragons around today, but the, the team name is the dragons. Dragons. This is not a dragon. That's a koala. Who did that? Who was just like, just, just make it a koala? Had they not seen a koala and they've gotten the two mixed up? Oh yeah, that's definitely a dragon. Let me show you these dragon pictures I have. And they just come up to their friends with the koalas and their friends never correct them. They just let them think those are dragons. Maybe your friends are just letting you think that's a koala. I know that you would do that. And that's <laughs> one of the reasons we're never having children because our children would never know anything because you would do that. We've come and done some errands. We needed to get tickets to go home tomorrow. <laughs> So we aren't gonna take the bus back because it just doesn't work out with all of the things and whatever. So we're gonna take the Shinkansen back. And it's a little more expensive than the bus by quite a bit. And I don't know, probably twice or more than twice the price. Like it's significantly more. The bus is 20% of the price. The bus is 20% of the, that's how much cheaper buses are than the bullet train. But the bullet train is so choice. <laughs> and we're gonna be doing that. So we came over to Nagoya station and we went in there and I didn't know exactly what time I wanted to go, but I did want I did want to take like the last, the latest train that was available. So I went up to the dude and I was like, yo, I want to go to this train station tomorrow, latest train I can. And he's like, well, what time? And I'm like, well, I don't know. Do you have a timetable? And he was like, mm, what time do you want to go? And I'm like, dude, I don't, I don't, I don't know the timetable. Like, <laughs> like that's not in my, that's not in my, my head. So like I Googled it and I found the time on Google. And I was like, this time, like this is the time I want to go. He's like, okay. And like that worked. But he didn't have like the ability to like produce a timetable or tell me when the last train was. Like I had to tell him, which was bizarre. And maybe the reason is because the timetable is outside and we're right outside the, the uh, area. And it's, check this out, check this out. So you got this table right here and then you can go, wham, timetable. <laughs> and this is like a phone book of like every train in the country. And like this teeny tiny little print that like you'd have, I, the old dudes know how to decipher this for sure. But anybody that's ever used the internet, like it's just like, they don't need this information. So you can like dig through this thing and like figure out all the connections that you would need to make. And then God knows what kind of forms you fill out and everything. <laughs> so that you can go in there and be armed with the proper information. Thank God Google solved my problem for me in like literally three seconds. <laughs> We have come to a chain restaurant that is unique only in the sense that it is from Nagoya. <laughs> it you is not can, you unique. You can enjoy you can, this like yeah. anywhere in Tokyo, but yeah. it is from here. And there's a zillion of them and it's called Sekai no Yamachan. And if you've been to Japan, you may notice that you have recognized this chicken man. <laughs> chicken man. <laughs> and he is uh, here peddling chicken and his chicken peddling is chicken wings. And they uh, come out with like, you know, this fried chicken wings. And there's like a pepper on this. And even though this is a chain that is all over the place, I've never been to one, have you? No. And it's kind of like an izakaya style place, but it's a little bit like commercially feeling. Like it's like the McDonald's of izakaya kind of. It's not like, <laughs> really good ambiance or anything like that. It's just fine. Um, I was surprised to find out that they have their own seasoning that they put on the wings. I just thought that this was a place that just does wings, yeah. but they're really into like a pepper kind of spicy seasoning that goes on. And you can choose the level that you want going from very light to 
intense. There's four levels. We went with level number three. That might be a bad choice. But we only got ten wings. We might get more and increase or decrease depending on this bite. <laughs> There's a way to do this where you can suck everything off, like all the meat off, like with one swift motion, but I don't personally have that skill. Do it quickly! <laughs> wow. So it's pretty good. I mean, it's like really like black peppery, like in a really good way. So it's a pretty good chicken wing. And it's not like a sauce, it's, a dr it's dry, it's a dry flavor. But the bird is fine, like, but the, you're coming here for that pepper taste. Yeah, I can see that getting addictive. Mm. Mm. Um, other things we got on the table, nothing like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna eat this like a monster just because it's a little easier and my fingers are already all chickeny. This is uh, cutie with uh, red miso. And red miso is famous from Nagoya. There's a lot of fried foods and stuff on their menu. <laughs> <laughs> Not much green. So Katie found something that's green that's actually kind of fun. So cutie is like a well, like a long Japanese narrow cucumber. Mmm, dude, the miso is good. That red miso. That's like, that's on point. And we got a couple of alcoholic drinks. I haven't had a cucumber in like <laughs> years. Really? Years. I eat cutie all the time. Like, I never buy them because they just aren't like the cucumbers I used to buy at home. So I always feel like, what am I doing with this? And I don't really have anything I'd put it in. And then if I'm at like a festival or whatever, which hasn't happened because COVID. Um, yeah. Ooh. Cucumber is good. <laughs> I'm at a chicken wing restaurant thinking about the cucumbers. Is this for the chicken bones? Or can we just... This is I like a chi in the chicken bone spittoon. I think that's for whatever you want to put in it. All right, chicken bones are going in. Another item that we grabbed, and like when you come to an izakaya place, it's like you just get like a plate of this and a plate of that, and then like just kind of all share everything. That's kind of what the vibe is. Now you said you wanted to get this, and I kind of laughed in my head about it. Why? It's a salmon. What's the bread word? Oh Budu, crap! Budu is that? <laughs> I can't not say it in katakana. Say it in katakana. Bruschetta. Bruschetta? I think that's what it is in English. It's, it's just a piece of bread with some salmon on it. And you thought that this was silly because I ordered it? You're at a chicken restaurant and you got the salmon on bread. I just didn't want more fried food. I know. I understood why you got it. It's all right. Um, this is a place where you really need this. Mm, that's true. Oh, and it's cute because it's got the... Is it chicken with the wings? Oh, is it backwards? Is this is this forwards to everyone? Yeah, I think it's like this. Yeah. <laughs> and we have some alcohol. I got the Yamachan high water. Sawa. Sawa. I don't um, even know what you ordered. She ordered for me. Yeah. Okay, and you got a double highball. And they definitely didn't think a woman ordered the double highball. He, he came over here, I was by myself, and he was like, double highball, and I was like, yeah, that's me. And he stood up like to walk away like this is the wrong table, and I was like, no, that's that's mine. But you don't need to take it away. <laughs> We've noticed that whenever we order anything, I order what would typically be a guy's drink, and you order typically what would be a woman's if, if drink. Fika, you had a coffee, yes. and I had a tea. Cool cha, uh, yeah. a tea. And the guy, he asked though, he was careful he about it. He did a good job. He did a good job, but you know in his head, he was like, already had this decided. He made eye contact with me with and the, after with the, he said, uh, uh, he yeah. looked right at me and I was like, ah, well, that's fine. He didn't go to put it down or put it in front of me or whatever. Good job, guy. Mm, my lips are burning a little bit, but I'm really excited about the next one. I just want to point out that this place is like prolific. There are locations of this all over Nagoya. We actually walked past one to come to the original place. Like we're at the original place. I don't know why, just mentioning that because it's everywhere. We have also written or seen some instructions. We didn't write them. Um, we have found some instructions on how to do it correctly or at least the best we can. I don't know if it's going to be correctly. So the instructions were to break the chicken wing like nya and then put the big part in your mouth. 
I don't know which side the big part is. And then, like, with your front teeth, you're supposed to just pull it all off in one go. Did you do it? Did it work? Kind of. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, you did really good. Mm. Oh, man. I'm a pro now, y'all. Just then be careful, don't choke to death. Don't choke to death on whatever's the little bones in here. <laughs> I keep eating one of the little bones. That was rewarding, man. <laughs> it was really rewarding. It's gotten livelier in here. It has gotten a little livelier in here. Uh, it's about to get maybe even a little more lively because we've got some Nihonshu. Smell it, dude. Apparently this is from Aichi Ken. So it's like from this prefecture. Really, really sweet smell. Oh wow. It's really easy to drink. Yeah. That ain't no one cup. It's actually like it's slides, so sweet slides down. Very soft. And we've also got the, the Gyuniku Anza Pimin is what it's called. Like Anza. And it's classy. When they bring you your green pepper and they've got an ice cube in it, it's it's the classiest. In the future, I hope to serve all my green peppers <laughs> with an ice cube. So you're supposed to take this and scoop up some cow. The Gyuniku. Oh my god, that's a mess. You, I don't know if wrong? they expected you to scoop it with that. I think they, they thought that you were going to maybe use some chopsticks and be like civilized, but you apparently took this as a challenge. That is a wonderful concoction. <laughs> I'm going to let it warm up the... Uh, mm -mm, no. no? Mm -mm. That ice cube is there for a reason, baby. Oh my god. You're good, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. We've also got 10 more chicken wings. <laughs> As you do. Mm. Dude, so I drank that last drink and I felt nothing. I had a sip of this and it's like hitting me like a truck. Yeah, that's because you got the girls' drink. Mm -hmm. No offense to girls, but I, that's why I escaped that world. Oh, so there's another half of this in there. So I'm gonna have one more of these. Yeah, I'm gonna be, you're gonna carry me to the hotel. <laughs> it's all good. Does he think I'm like Mighty Man that's or my something? <laughs> I am not that strong. I need one more, please. <laughs> I'm the <Zabini>. bee <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Yo, this alcohol store is called Rika Mountain. Or more cleanly said, Liquor Mountain. <laughs> Loving it. Here's a bit of the boring bits that people don't see during our trips. But every night when we come back to like wherever we're staying, like this situation happens where I'm taking data off the camera and I am mirroring it from the memory card onto an external hard drive or maybe into the laptop if I have enough space. It depends on what's going on. So like I do this every single night. As you can see, this is going to take a bit of time uh, because it does the copy and then it does a file check to make sure that the file moved over properly. And um, I don't know, I think today we shot about 60 gigs or so. And so that'll take a little while to do that. But that can happen like while I'm... Um, taking a shower or whatever, getting ready for bed. And then we also used two batteries up off the camera. So then I set up like a way to come over here and put them on chargers. So those two guys are charging. And of course that can compound, like if I start adding the GoPro or this video that I'm filming on my phone right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to back that up as well under there. Like the more things you have, <laughs> the more stuff you have to like make backups of and then charge and all that stuff. And that always happens. All of our trips that we've ever taken at the end of the day, we go, we set up and when Katie is doing maybe planning for the next day or something, I'm running around and doing all this and making sure all our data is redundant. Because the worst, the, the worst thing is like if we put the camera down and lost it, of course that would be heartbreaking because of the value of it. 
but we also don't want to lose all of the content that we've created with it. So do that. And then I carry the camera with the memory cards on it. And then that little hard drive that it's backing up to goes into a bag that's not mine, like Katie's bag or something. So if this wouldn't happen in Japan, but like if we got robbed or something or set down a bag and forgot it, we wouldn't lose both copies. So we try to separate everything as much as possible for maximum redundancy. Could do a fairly rapid obligatory hotel review showcase. It's just a business hotel. There's nothing like... It's mildly better than a business hotel. There's a little more space than a business hotel would give you. And we aren't stuck on a bed that is this size for both of us. Fair enough. But I mean, like, this is essentially the whole room. And there's like a big TV. We never turn on TVs in hotels. Unless the password's on them. Yeah, the Wi-Fi. Yeah, we need the password for the yeah. Wi-Fi. And then got like the, the this thing. I think the bathroom is really good. It is super clean in there. Like, ethically I'm, clean. I'm going to disagree with you about this bathroom being good. Oh, is it because of your height? As usual. It's okay here, but I have what socks on. Just trust me. If I stand in a tub, just raised a little bit, I have to do this. It's just, that's, no bueno, it's not good. <laughs> and then this is just the entryway. And now you've seen the whole hotel. But the one thing of note about the hotel that is perhaps interesting is you want to say what you asked for when we when we signed up for this i asked for a quiet room which i would say they succeeded in there were some weird sounds the first day but like at nighttime no problem but i asked for a view and what view did you get <laughs> well it turns out that this hotel <laughs> is in the nightlife district i guess so when you looked at the, it wasn't, it wasn't so bad now when I made the video, but like bad, it's not bad. It's just noticeable, I guess is a better word. I looked, when we, when we got here last night and we looked out the window, there were definitely some girls out there working. <laughs> like quite a few girls out there were working. And that vibe is still going on out there right now, but it isn't quite as explosive as it was last night. So, so Friday night is the freakier of the nights? Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what, maybe it's because of the rain or something, I don't know. Saturday. <laughs> You had your fill on Friday and you just taken it easy. So, uh, the view is girls at work. <laughs> Might have shown this before, but it shows the vacant toilet seats. But what is surprising me so much is how many toilets are at this roadside stop. There are so many toilets. Now you've reached the end. You got anything? Ah, uh, yeah. I thought that you were down really hard on the pasta. I was not paying attention. Our train ride out to Fuji Gaoka. Did I get that right? Fuji Gaoka. Gaoka. Okay, let me start over. I get that dinosaurs are not around today. Or crap. I get that dragons are not around today. I, I totally understand that there might be someone that has not seen a dinosaur in person. Pretty much dinosaurs, damn it. Remember the video that we shot in Nagoya with no plans? And we just rolled. Mm -hmm. This is for the first one of those videos when we went to the big park and all of those things and stuff. Mm -hmm. That was pretty fun. Yeah, it was. <laughs> we ended up, uh, at the end of it, we were drunk because we were drinking that, that Nihonshu from Yamachan. Oh, yeah, I've been thinking and about those uh, those wings. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I, wanna, that I just pepper. I, I, I don't know. It's been stuck in my head. <laughs> I just looked it up. There's one in Tachikawa, like near the station. So we can go. We're gonna go there soon. I think. Mm. Like I'm into going there and checking that out. Refresh again. that craving. Um, but yeah, if you want to see more videos like this and like videos like other things as well, then check us out here on the YouTube's where you can subscribe and ring the bell and leave the comments and hit the like button and all the things that make the robots happy. And then you can also go over to Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or Twitch to get more involved. And then let, let me ask you a question: how many how many Twitter followers do you think we have? Just guess. I don't have. I don't understand. <laughs> I didn't Twitter. know. I didn't know this either. So we were talking like, about. Like it I on... don't know what a large group following is or a small following. <laughs> I, I really don't know. I think and it's I like feel like four thousand or something, and I thought it was like fifteen hundred. Like I really don't look at these numbers. Yeah, very much. if I was gonna guess, I guess I would have said twelve hundred. But <laughs> I, I then I just realized like I'm never even. I, I don't understand it. So. <laughs> but I am on Twitter. <laughs> You're not selling these to the people. Like get over there on these social medias. You're like I don't know what this is. This thing. Come and hang out with somebody. <laughs> you asked the question. <laughs> it's true. Uh, probably didn't do a good job selling that one. Um, but yeah, we've got a Discord as well, and we have got the, the most important part of it, the most which is important Patreon. Part is Patreon, which is how <laughs> we keep all this stuff going. And uh, yeah, there's a bunch of perks over there, early releases, and postcard clubs, and there's and a lot of amazing videos. people over there who are really helping us out, and it's very cool. Thanks, guys. Yo, am I supposed to throw babies away? <laughs>